These two cars are honestly the most significant cars in my collections and what I think are two of the most significant IndyCar finds and restoration over the past 20 or 30 years. I'll start with this one. It is the 1965 Brawner Hawk 1, which Mario Andretti took his rookie test at Indianapolis for the Indy 500. He qualified the car for the race, finished third, I believe, went on to win his first ever IndyCar race in this car and won the championship in 1965. And what's really neat about this car is a man named Clint Bronner, who was the crew chief on the car, had a young mechanic named Jim McGee, who went on to be one of the greatest IndyCar crew chiefs ever. He, Mario Andretti, Clint Bronner, built this car. It's a Brabham copy. As the cars started to come over uh, from, from overseas with rear engines, lighter cars, the roadsters were being phased out. And this is an American-built, home-built car. And I think, I have to do the research, but I think it's it may be the last home-built car to ever win the USAC championship. And this car is special to me because I grew up near Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And that's where Mario is from. You know, to me, Mario Andretti is, is the, the world's greatest race car driver. And when I found this chassis, I knew that there was another car that had some parts on it that was a replica. I knew there were another pile of parts, and I knew that, you know, Clint Bronner still had some stuff. And with Jim McGee's help and uh, Mario Andretti's help to identify parts and pieces and what the car was, we gathered everything. So even though the car hasn't, you can't say it's been totally restored. Now we had to do a little welding and painting and fabrication on the chassis, but mostly it was just bolted together. And Jim McGee, who was the chief mechanic on this car, or lead mechanic at that time, verified and documented every single part that went on the car, including the engine that's in it. This is a four cam Ford, and it still has the 1965 USAC stamp on it. Built by a guy named Joe Bogosian. He built it originally. I had him rebuild it. So again, verified by Mario, verified by Jim McGee, engine by Joe Bogosian. This car has about 85% of the original parts and pieces that were on it when it raced in 1965. This is Eagle 701, 1969 Santa Ana Eagle, designed by Tony Southgate. It was Dan Gurney's personal car for the Indy 500 in 1969. Dan won races with it. Uh, he finished second to Mario in, in the Indy 500 in 69. It was owned at one time by Carroll Shelby. Offered to me while we were doing that TV show, I immediately called the, the Gurney, said I'd found the car. They verified it. It was Dan's car. We brought it back here, sent it to Walt Goodwin at Race Car Restorations in Indianapolis, and went through it a bumper to bumper again because the car was stashed away for so long, many of the original parts are on it. We needed to find a Gurney Westlake engine. So Dan was huge in the development of the Westlake cylinder head, same type uh, cylinder heads that were on his Formula One car, uh, stock Ford, short block. And Dan said, hey, he knew of an engine, but, but had to go to New Zealand to find this or to get this engine, but this engine was actually in the rotation, 1969. Uh, I think they took four of the West Lakes with them and this went through it. So to me, these are two of the most significant and historic IndyCar finds, restorations, preservations over the last several decades. You know, Mario is certainly a, a hero to me and Dan Gurney, you know, a guy that built, designed, drove his own stuff, two different Restoration preservations, if you will. This car is done just immaculately. Everything's perfect on it because we needed to bring it back to the way Dan drove it in the Indy 500. This car is restored exactly as it raced that day. Right down to when you're looking at gaps, people say, why didn't you fix that gap? Because that's the way it was the day that it raced. Very, very important for the car to be represented as it raced. Now it's probably a lot prettier and a lot cleaner, but if you see a gap, or something that doesn't fit right. Even something as simple as the rear spoiler on this car, one high, one low, being different, that's because that's the way Dan ran it. And the same with this car, the Mario Andretti car. You know, had we not found this chassis and then hunted down the pieces, this car may never have been together. And again, I feel one of the most significant preservations in IndyCar history is this car because if you look at it a lot of the stuff is exactly as it ran or as it was built to run it's not the prettiest car but it is original and when you look at this you see that hey this is how they did that in 1965 when we 
collect cars and rebuild cars is very, very important to us to keep the DNA of the men that built it so that the, the world could see these cars as they would have raced.